Hi, this is Peter Morgan, and in this episode of the DJ Podcast, we'll be going over Serato Scratch Live. Welcome to this week's episode of the DJ Podcast. My name is Peter Morgan, and in today's video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the new playlist feature that's in Serato Scratch Live version 2. So now we're in Scratch Live, and the first thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that we have the playlist feature enabled. So we're going to go into our setup, and under plugins, you can see that there's the Serato playlist option. We're just going to click enable Serato playlist plugin, and we will also enable the live playlist feature. So let's get out of the setup menu and let's go into the history tab, which you can click by you can open by clicking on the history button. And you'll see that now there is a new button down here on the bottom that says start live playlist. And what this is going to do is if you click on it, you will log in to your serato.com account and you can automatically update your playlist to the web, to the web as you are playing your set. Now it's important to note that you do need an internet connection while you are playing to use this, the live playlist feature. So if you know you have, um, it, this is good if like you're playing at a radio station or you know a house party where you can be connected. But obviously, unless you have some sort of like a 3G card, you're not going to be able to use this feature at a club. So we're going to click Start Live Playlist. And you'll see that it says this feature will submit play data from your history to your online Serato playlist and may affect sound card performance while sending. That's just because, you know, if you have a an older processor, maybe it'll use up a little bit more of your CPU. So we're going to click yes. And you can see that it now is going to open up our web browser. And you can see I'm already logged in. So it says, you know, this user is logged in. Are you that user? And say, yes, that's me. And here we go with our new live playlist. So what we can do is we can set our DJ name and we can say, you know, what the name is. So we're going to just call this episode number. And you can see here you have different options, like what type of environment is it in? So maybe, you know, we'll call this home studio and you can say what time you started and all that kind of thing. And if you have, if you're streaming this over the, the net, you can say, oh, where can, people can listen to this. So we're going to click save. And here you have our, the playlist as it's currently, as it currently looks. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start playing a song. So we'll load this into our uh, deck and we're going to, you know, play and maybe just jump around here a little bit. All right, and now we're going to just throw another song on, and then we'll just play this. Yeah, we'll play that, and we'll, we'll stop this one, and we're going to throw another one on here. And you can see that while this is happening, you have the information about what's going on with the live playlist happening right here where my mouse is. So we'll play this, and we'll stop this one. And if we go back to our... Oh, if we go back to our web browser, you can see that the information is updated here. So we have the time when we started, and then it automatically updates how long ago it was since we played this. And if you go into the edit playlist, you or, oh, yes, sir. so uh, let's say we've stopped, you know, we're, we're done, and we're going to eject this. And uh, okay, so now we want to stop our live playlist, we're going to click stop and it'll send it up through the interwebs to strato.com. And now we've got our little playlist here. We'll just refresh the page. And you can see that we can now go in and edit the track. So, you know, we can see, oh, this one didn't play very long. So we'll, we'll click show and, you know, we can change the artist or, you know, the title. And also if we want, we can insert a track. So let's say there was a, a track that we played off of a vinyl record or a CD that we didn't have in Serato. We can say, you know, oh, this one played for three minutes and 45 seconds. The artist was a uh, jammer and the title was PBNG. 
jammer. I don't know. I just made it up. Uh, so we can insert that. And we click save. You can see that. Oh, oh. Click save. You can see that now we have this playlist here. Right? And that's, that's all great and dandy. But now what if we don't have an internet connection? What if we want to, say, upload a playlist after we got home from a gig? Well, we can do a similar thing. So we're going to click on the date here that we have our playlist. And now you can see that there's this option under export that says Serato playlist. So if you've never used the export function for the history before, you've get, you usually get three option, options. Text, which just gives you a text file with your playlist. CSV, which is used in spreadsheet applications. Or M3U, which is used for playing in a media uh, application. It's just like a playlist. Well, now we also have Serato playlist. And if you click export here, you'll see once again it says it's going to be put online. And you just click yes, and it'll send it. And here you can view your playlist before it actually gets uploaded. And you click continue. And now we have our playlist here again. And you can go through and uh, see if you click on the playlist button, you can see the other playlists that you've already had or uploaded. So let's say we wanted to go and look at, say, this playlist, right? So let's say we export this one and we'll click yes. And then we'll click continue. All right, so now we have this second playlist, right? We can go to the playlist tab and you can see now we have two playlists that we can click on. And if you want to share this playlist out with the world, we just click edit playlist. We'll click public. And you know, we can say like club XYZ or whatever. And we'll click save. And now we can simply take this link and send that to our friends or we can put that with our mixes that we have online. That's it for this week's episode of the DJ podcast. Join us next week for an interview with Denver-based DJ Trevor Nygaard. And don't forget to support the show by commenting, rating, and subscribing on YouTube, Viddler, or Vimeo, as well as liking the DJ Podcast on Facebook at facebook.com slash the DJ Podcast.